The port of Faro in the southern Algarve of Portugal looks inconspicuous and idyllic during the mating season of the sea hares. Only those who look carefully will discover the black wafting lumps of various sizes and shapes on the edge of the harbor basin, which occasionally swim through the harbor. They are sea hares, a plygia fasciata in Latin, which have nothing in common with the fish of the same name. The Portuguese refer to this species of sea slugs as vinagreira negra, lesma do mar negra or libra do mar negra, which means black sea hare. On closer inspection, the animals also look more like a species of slugs than rabbits, and some are more brownish than black, depending on the light. Sea hares live in sea water and prefer to feed on algae and seaweed and can grow up to 40 centimeters long and weigh up to a kilo. Occasionally, up to 1.5 kilos is also mentioned. The sea hares are widespread in the Mediterranean and the Atlantic up to France and down along the coasts of West Africa and occasionally on the British coast. Food consumption takes place at rest or in motion which could explain the many resting animals at the edge of the harbor. A special feature of the sea hares is the ability to emit a purple cloud of ink for defense which is known from squids. The ink secreted by some sea hare species is poisonous and should not be ingested. A fisherman at the harbor told me that as children they threw sea hares at each other, which speaks against the toxicity of the ink in the species of Plygia fasciata. Some people can have an allergic reaction to the ink, but without serious consequences. The hermaphrodite animals usually reproduce in larger groups of up to 20 animals with individual animals also mating as males and females at the same time. The mating process can drag on for hours. In the port of Faro, the difference between low and high tide is up to 3.5 meters. Amazingly, many sea hares remain dry when the tide recedes, be it on steps or on stones on the bank. We ask the locals if the animals will survive until the water rises again. We were told that it was not a problem for the animals and that they were distracted from reproduction and exhausted and therefore end up on dry land. If you look at the animals that ended up in the dry, after a while in the sun they don't look particularly good anymore, and some don't seem alive anymore. At first you can still see the movement of the animals directly, or through the changing glitter in the sun. If you push these animals back into the water, they sink immediately without further movement. We could not determine whether the animals survived in the dry. According to the traces on the steps, some animals had died and probably did not survive the period up to the flood. This was also confirmed by research on the internet, according to which the animals cannot tolerate drought and temperature fluctuations. According to the occurrence of low tide victims in the port of Faro, however, a large number of animals in the reproductive phase die every day from landings. Traces of the violet ink were also partially visible on the steps. We could only guess at the emission itself, or the reason for the emission. We could only see the remaining ink trails when sea hares were pushed back into the water. For us and other tourists at the port, the experience was definitely very interesting, and we often stopped to watch the hustle and bustle of the sea hares. It's a species of animal we didn't even know existed before. <laughs>